Um, first of all, it appears to be good news on the takeover this week. So what's your reaction to what you've been told about timescales, etc.? Well, the reaction is obviously one that there's a long way to go, I think, or from what I gather of the previous situations, there's a long way to go to get everything to a final point. Um, but the early signs look favourable um, in the situation, so we'll have to wait and see. But it certainly looks like a, a stronger situation than past. What do you hope a takeover brings to this? Well, I think open, openly speaking, that more of the stability of it, you know, because it's been um, on an unsettled ground for such a long time now, um, you know, with varying situations, various opinions about what what was and what is and what should be and all the rest of it. Um, so I'd imagine it would probably clear up that kind of uh, changing changing the noise, as I call it, you know, changing the the noise that surrounds our football club, um, certainly in its initial spell. Um, you know, should it get over the line, um, then I would imagine bringing that stability and the feel of stability um, after a, an up and down period uh, for many different reasons. Have you spoken to the prospective new owners yet? Do nope. you know when you're likely to? No, I don't know when I'm likely to. I haven't spoken to them. I don't know when I'm likely to. Um, so I'll wait on news on that. I mean, it's not a given that they speak to me, but you would imagine um, they probably will at some point. When would you like to have policy over your own future? It's not really relevant. I've tried to speak openly about it. You know, I got bought here as a custodian. I got bought here to do a specific job, I feel, you know, especially looking backwards from where it was to where it is now. Um, and I continue to work hard at that. And that's really my focus. You know, the, the rest of it will sort itself out. You know, obviously, we've got to change results. That's a given. But the actual workload and what I've done there has been considerable, I think. And I just keep doing that. And then, you know, however it opens up in the future, we'll see. If it's not about yourself, though, you think in January well all these things are to be um, decided upon should the, the new ownership come in you know what I mean there's varying reasons there because don't forget they'll have a view of what the club is they'll have a view of what their thinking is moving forwards um, so until I know more about that then you know my situation doesn't change I just keep working hard as I've been doing with my staff and the players to change the current situation the bigger situation there has been a lot of change a lot of good change I think but the current situation of course needs change we've got to win back, uh, get back to winning games we'll get back to Football squad wise, how are we looking this week? Brandway ready to return. Uh, Pato, <coughs> Excuse me. Perhaps Gay and Michelin, certainly, well. certainly, uh, Jared's in front of the curve compared to Pato. Pato's had a much longer period out and quite a serious injury. He's doing very well at the moment, but that's a longer recovery period. Uh, Gannon unfortunately lost his father, so he was away, uh, but he was in Senegal, so he's had you know quite a period. He had seven days without training, so only just back in. Miko's uh, well again, so that's good. Um, so there's certainly more a picture of, of what it is. Seamus is a bit longer. Broge is a bit longer. Um, who am I missing? There's one more. Uh, oh, uh, Youssef. Youssef is a bit longer as well. So, you know, but we are beginning to look a little bit more rounded as a squad, com particularly compared to um, as, as little as uh, 10 days ago. Obviously, go back to the Leicester game and the Southampton game. Yeah, you had leads and it, you ended up losing those leads. But at the same time, you didn't compound that by losing it in the night. Um, does that give you at least some kind of a basis to go to go for? Is the mentality shift in some way? Well, I think the you know the the, the 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 thing that I've mentioned is trying to mould together the new players coming in, get them up to Premier League speed, which I think they're showing good signs of doing. Um, that attack, which I think we've done better as the, 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 the certainly the last two or three games, um, you know, we're scoring and looking a real threat, and I thought we did against Leicester. And then finding that balance to tighten it the, the the other end of the pitch, which last season we did so well with 13 clean sheets, and particularly at the end of last season when we really needed to find results and find clean sheets, we certainly did. So there's a knowledge base there of, of doing it. Um, the change of the side, the change in players, maybe learning that and getting up to speed quickly. Um, the defensive unit coming together, um, you know, and, and joining all the dots really. But like I said, it's, it sounds easy. It's qu clearly not. Uh, but we know we've got to do it better. And I thought there were strong signs in the last couple of games of, of that. And finding still the open play to go and cause other teams trouble and, and look a threat. Um, we haven't been as clinical as we'd like, certainly not against Leicester, because I thought we got in some great positions and had some good chances. Um, and then keeping the back door shut, which, yet again, we did better against Leicester, I thought. You know, I mean, we, we can see one, you know, a lot was made of set piece. If, and I think I mentioned, oh, if someone crosses it and a marker lose their man and head it in the goal, then, of course, we as a staff, you know, 
have a responsibility towards that. But sometimes you're bobbling around the box. They're the hardest ones. They're the hardest ones to, you know, pick the bones out. And that's really what happened at Leicester. You know, I think they had two shots on target. One of them was bobbling around the box, and they got a foot on it quicker than we did. So, you know, that was a bit of a more of a, a detail that's kind of in the lap of the gods. But um, I think there's better signs, but then better signs have got to bring wins. And, uh, and I think that's the biggest change, is getting that winning edge back. Has been a case, though, of point, pinpointing what's been going wrong when, when defending for set pieces? Or... Well, yeah, I mean, the, the, apart from personnel and the change in personnel, for varying reasons we've spoken about injuries, illness, all the rest of it, then, then you know, the, the format pretty much has only changed minorly because we were so strong, you know, last season. So... You know, you know what it's like. You don't want to overchange it. Well, you know, it could be down to personnel being fit. It could be down to the team, and it could be down to individuals. So, it's sticking with the basic principles. But whilst to its very simplest form, the ball comes in the box. Someone's got to go and clear it. Someone's got to go and head it. Someone's got to deal with that situation. And you want all players to have that mindset. I just wondered as well. I think I've kind of asked you this before, but whether nervousness comes into it uh, when you've not been able to put teams away. Well, I don't. I don't think it. It's helpful, you know, when you, when you you haven't got that edge of of killer instinct, and you know, and I think that's both boxes, by the way. That's not just looking at the front of the pitch. Um, you know, taking responsibility at the back is is always talked about. What about the front? You know, what about getting in the right areas? What about making that pass instead of in a defender making that finish? You know, putting it in the corner rather than over the bar. You know, these are all clinical details. So, I think it's partly the the killer instinct in both boxes, and I think we've been working on that, trying to analyse it, trying to bring it together, but equally trying to allow the players the freedom to take away that suggestion of nervousness. You know, you've still got to have the freedom to go and play and enjoy the challenge that is right in front of them. And we've done that many times before here, you know, coming through tough periods and we're, and we're still coming out of a tough period, but I think there's better signs. Finally for me, Sean, just how do you sum up the importance of this game, bearing in mind that obviously it's two sides that are still looking for that first Premier League win of the season? Yeah, I mean, look, the importance of every game is... is quite obvious but there are some you know which you look at and go all right that would that would be f considerably favorable to get a win from of course but i mean we're at that stage at the minute you know after a tough start to, to find whatever way it is whoever it's against you know to find that way of winning to find that way of keep keep calm about the situation deliver performances and like i said there has to be organization for that freedom to, to stay with the that kind of fine line of being loose enough to play but focused enough to stay tight as a unit and make sure that you defend properly and do all the basics so I think we're still searching for that regardless of who we're playing, but that's the focus is on us delivering better performances to get wins. Thanks, Vinny. We'll go to Alan at Premier League Productions. <coughs> Obviously, we've spoken about key players returning hopefully this weekend. Only one defeat in 19 against Crystal Palace. Do you feel there's a sort of air of extra expectation on this game? I think there's expectation always, um, so I don't think that changes Everton. Um, I think the, the stats and facts are favourable. Um, I always make it clear to the, the, the players there's no guarantee to that, um, but I think it's a favourable situation. That doesn't make make the outcome easier. You know, we're still still a bona fide uh, Premier League football club, and the, the, you know, at the end of last season, being certainly if not raved about, certainly spoken about very very um, positively as we were by ourselves. So, you know, both of us haven't got off to the starts we want. I'm sure of that. One of the things particularly you were spoken about very positively about towards the end of last season was when you were at Goodison Park at home, with so much positivity around the club this week, what do you expect from the atmosphere at Goodison Park this weekend and how do you want the team to feed off that? Uh, well, positivity this time is slightly different. You know, I think the positivity from last season was due to the team performing and the positivity this week, uh, positivity, sorry, was, is more maybe that feeling of what's going to change, what, what could change, what ifs and what ands and all the rest of it. But... You know, inside the stadium, it's our job to bring that. It's certainly my job with the players to go and deliver a performance that can enhance on positivity. The fans have always been there for us. It's about giving them something to work with and uh, to go on. And I've said that ever since I walked in the building. Um, so that'll be the main thought from us is on the pitch stuff. You know, the off the pitch stuff, it'll play its part, of course. And you guys will write different stuff and say different things than what you put previously. That's just the nature of what it is. Um, but it's on the pitch stuff we need to stay focused on. Thanks, Alan. We'll go to Shamoon at the BBC. Hi, Sean. Just, you spoke <coughs> about Excuse the me. hope that the takeover brings stability. How far, if it gets done, how far do you think it will go to fix some things? Here? Yeah, it's not the hope. I was just suggesting that it, it looks like it's going to bring a different form of stability, their form of stability. I don't know their business model. I don't know the strategy. I haven't spoken to them. Um, I can only go on what broadly and very generally um, speaking has said that they've done a good job with Roma. Um, you know, I think that's a general overview. 
So I don't know what their strategy will be and what their model will be. Um, so that will be the first thing to it's wait and see. How far it will go to fixing things at this point? Well, like I said, I don't know. And until I know what their strategy, what their model is, why they see it, their viewpoint of the club, um, what they want to learn about it, what their... Because you, you never know different owners. I've dealt with many. You know, some want to learn from you about it and some want to thrust upon you and the, and the club what they're going to do or someone to learn first and then maybe change what they're going to do. So I don't know what their strategy is and what their belief is and what their culture environment, what they want to make of Everton Football Club. They might be looking at the history, they might be looking at the future and respecting both. So I'll have to wait and see. Under the circumstances and everything that's been thrown at you here, how do you feel about the job that you've done here personally? How do you think you've dealt with everything? Well, there's no two ways about that. The bigger picture of the job then I worked very hard to correct a lot of things. So I've been pleased with that. But, but you know, it's a strange business now in football management. You know, that, that's not really to be cared for by anyone else than me and the people who are involved in it. You know, the fans want to win. I've never lost sight of that. Fans want to win. They want ideally win with style, of course, as well, and in a, in a way that you can win that is, um, you know, f user friendly for the fans and they enjoy the winning aspect, but they want to win. The rest of it, the rest of the job that people don't see is the bit that, that, in a management view, this is, you know, not on the pitch, is all your opinions, but from a purely management point of view, then I've done a very good job. So one day, it'll, you know, there'll be some way of me telling people the truth of what goes on, but it's, it's not for now, and I've said that all along. And for the fans, how important is it that this deal gets done so that they have something to look forward to? Um, I don't think it was any more or less important than what it was in the first place. You know, I think... I can't remember, is that four or five different ownerships groups have looked at the club and it's maybe and the fans have been waiting, you know, is it going to change, is it not going to change? So I think, I think like myself, I think the majority of fans will be saying, right, OK, well, it's not there yet. But I think the early noise seems like it's positive, you know, about this group. And, and like I say, their, their history of, of, certainly their recent history of Roma, I think looking on a football uh, point of view. I mean, it's, you want the fans to look forward to being part of Everton Football Club. That's been difficult, I understand that, and it's been difficult for a number of years. But that's what you want them to look forward to, the weekend, the games. I think this is maybe something they can view as, well, like I say, more stability in, in order to get that bit right. Um, but I'll have to wait and see. No one knows truly yet until either they put out what they project um, to the club or they speak to me and I put out or whatever. But no one truly knows which way it's going to go yet. What are you going to talk about once the chaos dies down here? With who? With us. Oh, yeah, well, hopefully football. It'd be nice once in a part of time. I did. I, I think last season I did speak about football twice. So it'd be nice to just come in here and speak about football and take a few questions like that. Unfortunately, in my 21 months here, it hasn't been like that, and that's just the way it goes. So I just answer as many questions about as many topics at Everton Football Club as I can and answer them the best I can, as honestly as I can, um, and try and find my way and find the club's way through it all. Thanks, Jermaine. We'll go to Gina. <coughs> we talk about football, then. Well, that'd be nice. Um, and I has not played a full 90 minutes in the Premier League yet. How close is he to a full 90 minutes? Has that been fitness or has that been tactics? Yeah, he's had a, he's had a few problems with cramping up late in games, as he did at um, Villa. So we've had to look at that. Um, and he's puts a lot in. He's, as you've seen, he's a dynamic player. And that can get quite testing on the body when, you've, when you're finding that true fit. And he is a fit player, by the way. Um, but that Premier League fitness that I spoke about is a different kind of thing. So adapting to that, the challenge of, of what the game registers at any given time, but mainly making sure he can see through the 95, 97 minutes and see it completely through. You know, there's a lot of details in the guys. We've seen that already this season. We can't afford people running out of energy um, because that often brings mistakes. You said Jared Branthwaite is fit again. Does that mean he's in contention for a start? Yeah, he's basically? definitely in contention. He's, he's come through a game last week. He was, he's done a lot of background work as well as just a game, um, you know, so he's, he's looking stronger and he feels stronger. Pato's slightly different with the nature of his injury as well, so he's going to be a longer term. He's, he's been, I think, we're surprised actually now time flies. I think he was pushing around that six-month mark, so it's a longer period. So we've got to be a bit more careful and, and sort of gentle as it goes with Pato um, to get him back to full fitness. But Jared's a different kind of injury and has been fitter for a longer period and doing a lot more background sort of sports science fitness and then coming into the football fitness. So he's had a good couple of weeks now. As you get those players back now and you've got more players available to you, when you're selecting that starting eleven, 
How are you going to look at that now? Is it is it playing minutes people have had? Is it ability? Is it opponent? It's got to be a bit of everything. You know, you're trying to, you know, certainly at this stage, I mean, I made changes for the Leicester game because I felt it was right to do so. And, you know, trying to find that winning combination, winning formula, whichever you describe it as, that's the key, really. And then the one thing I do know, the Premier League will tell you, you need fit players, as in fit injury-free, and then also physically fit enough to deliver performances. We've had a very disjointed pre-season for one reason or another, very disjointed beginning of the season for one reason or another, the illness and injury, of course. So getting everyone to a fitness level that is, is important to what the Premier League brings has been the toughest challenge. I believe we're getting there now. So that's going to be helpful. Apart from the likes of Jared, who's just getting on the cusp. You, you know, you can imagine, everyone knows in football, you get to a certain fitness level, the last bit is playing. That's the hardest bit to replicate in, in bounce games and the 21 games, just to replicate that real feel and all the emotions that go into performance. So that'll be the next step for a few of them. But some are already in front of that period, especially Illy. Jesper's getting there now. Tim got there a little bit quicker, but still find his feet. You know, obviously quite inexperienced in the Premier League. So, you know, it's important for them all to get to that fitness level. But I think we are getting there now. You, you mentioned there about finding that winning formula. Is the pressure starting to build now? You know, people will go on about there's not been a win yet this season. So how are you... If there is pressure, how are you dealing with that in here? And is it something you There's all been, speak about? The pressure, the pressure has been since the moment I walked in. So for me, it's, it's just been part of learning to normalise it. You know, that's what it's like being a bit of manager through this, this spell that I've had in 21 months. You know, the ups and downs, the ins and outs, constant noise, answering every question about every topic at Everton Football Club. So the pressures are given here. You know, that's what I've noticed. And, you know, I had to learn to deal with that uh, very quickly, particularly going into the end of that first season when, you know, it was the last game of the season to win. Um, that's as big a pressure as you're ever going to get, trust me, especially if you remember the team we had. We're having to change shape, change players, everything. So that's as big a pressure as I've ever been under in, in professional football. So you kind of, it normalises eventually. It becomes part of my role here is to deal with that pressure and handle it. It's not always enjoyable. The better pressure is when you're winning. You know, that's the better pressure when you're at the top end. But it is what it is. So now it's time to keep managing the best I can, keep answering all of your questions about all the topics that come up and, and, and try and get a team that can win games. And that's still remains my focus, but I have to do all this bit as well, as you know.